Good morning and welcome to Dandelion Devotionals. This is Tara Johnson. I just couldn't wait to share with you something new that caught my attention today as I was going through my Bible study time. And um, I know I haven't shared much recently, um, but you know, it, as I'm recording this, we're in the middle of the COVID-19 pandemic. So things have been really busy. I've been homeschooling, which I've been homeschooling for years, but now I'm, I'm taking care of all three kids. And especially the little guy um, has kept me on my toes. But I woke up a little earlier this morning and um, had extra long, quiet time with God. And um, he really showed me something extra special, I feel like, in my Bible study time. And, and as he often does, it was during a passage that I've read so many times, but he showed me something new and I couldn't wait to share it with you all. And it was while I was reading the, um, the story of the Samaritan woman. So um, I'll read just a few verses and just let you know um, what I gleaned from it. And I pray that it will mean something to you all too. So um, this is from John chapter 4. And I've got to say, Gearing up towards Easter is my favorite time of the year, and I always make a point to start going through the Gospels a few weeks before Easter. So I pick John, and because um, I'm getting gearing up for Resurrection Week, so Passion Week. So, John chapter four. When the Lord learned that the Pharisees had been told that Jesus was making and baptizing more disciples than John, although Jesus himself was not baptizing, but his disciples were, he left Judea and returned again to Galilee. Now he had to go through Samaria. Let me stop right there and say, say that the Samaritans and the Jews did not like each other. You talk about prejudice. They had it out for each other. So he arrived at a Samaritan town called Sychar, near the tract of land that Jacob gave his son Joseph. And Jacob's well was there. So Jesus, tired as he was from his journey, sat down by the well. And it was then about the sixth hour noon. Okay? Noon. Then a woman from Samaria came to draw water, and Jesus said to her, Give me a drink. For his disciples had gone off into the city to buy food. He was alone. And the Samaritan woman asked him, How is it that you, being a Jew, ask me, a Samaritan woman, for a drink? For Jews have nothing to do with Samaritans. Jesus answered her, If you knew about God's gift of eternal life, and who it is who says, Give me a drink, you would have asked him instead, and he would have given you living water. She said, Sir, you have nothing to draw with, no bucket or rope, and the well is deep. Where do you get that living water? She was thinking very physically, wasn't she? Very literally here. Are you greater than our father Jacob, who gave us the well? He used to drink from it himself, and his sons and his cattle. And Jesus answered her, Everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again, but whoever drinks the water that I give him will never be thirsty again. But the water I give him will become in him a spring of water, satisfying his thirst for God, welling up, continually flowing, bubbling within him to eternal life. Okay, now he really had her attention at this point. She had been thinking so literally, and he turns it on her, right? I'm going to get to my two really important points here in just a minute. I'm going to skip down a little bit. And he in the course of the conversation, they kind of go back and forth, kind of about some deep philosophical and theological points here. And then he reveals himself. She's, she's basically saying, I, I heard that there's a Messiah coming. And he says, I'm him. Just then his disciples came and they were surprised to find him talking with a woman. However, no one said, what are you asking about? Or why are you talking to her? So she left at this point and went to go tell everybody. And it's interesting, right in the middle of this, Jesus kind of does, as he often does, he just kind of takes a 180 on her. They're talking about all this stuff. And he was like, hey, why don't you go call your husband and come back? And she said, I don't have a husband. And he said, yeah, you're right. You don't have a husband. For you've had five husbands, and the man you're now living with is not your husband. You've said this truthfully. Okay. So notice in the middle of this, not once did he condemn her and say, how dare you? What sort of person are you? You've been living with all these men that aren't your husband, you know, all this sort of stuff. Um, or you've been living with all these guys and now the guy you're with is not even your husband. That's what I should have said. And, um, but not once does he really say, how dare you? Okay. Why do you think that is? Well, I'll tell you what I think. I think it's because Jesus knows 
that we're all sinners. That's the whole point that he came. That's the whole reason that he came. There's no difference between you and I and this Samaritan woman. We have all messed up. I'm, I'm so irritated and tired of all the fights that I see, whether in person or on social media or wherever, about this sin is worse than that sin and how dare, how dare this group be like that and how dare this group be like that. We are all in the same boat because apart from Jesus Christ, we would all be going to hell, okay? All have sinned. There is none righteous. No, not one. But if we accept Jesus Christ as Savior, which is what he's telling her, if you come to me and accept the gift that I've given you, you will have eternal life. It'll be like living water bubbling up and welling up inside you. You'll never thirst for the things that destroy you again. Okay? Now the disciples, they come up to him and said, why? you know, they were thinking, why are you talking to this woman? Jesus was amazing. Women were looked down on, and especially a Samaritan woman? Mm -mm. No. Jesus elevated women. He elevated children. He elevated the poor. He elevated the sick. He cares about everyone. He cares about you. Okay? But here's what I really thought was interesting, okay? The Samaritan woman thought she knew what kind of of treatment she was going to get from this Jewish man. She was going out to fetch water at noon. Other women would go out and draw water, even other Samaritan women, early in the morning because they needed it for their daily tasks. She went out at noon because no doubt she was ostracized from society because of her life decisions and because of her past. She assumed that she knew who this man, what this man was going to be like and what he was going to say. How many of us base our opinion of God on what other people have told us about him? How many of us think that we know all about God because of what someone has told us? The only way you can really know the heart of God and what he thinks about things and what he thinks about you is by opening up his word. This is his love letter to you. Okay? No offense, guys, but I have known some really messed up Christians. Okay? They call themselves Christians. I think sometimes they're very sincere, but sometimes they're sincerely wrong. And I know some Christians who are passionately in love with Jesus and follow his word completely, and their hearts are so pure, and they understand it and they get it completely. Those are the ambassadors that I love to see on the front lines, teaching and preaching and loving on people. But sometimes, you know, we're just humans and we just get things mixed up. We're all trying to figure it out. So if you really want to know what God thinks, you need to get to know Him. Not just go on what other people say about Him. Get to know Him. This, this woman thought that she knew exactly what, who the Messiah was going to be. But she was wrong, and she quickly figured that out. After Jesus revealed these things that he knew about her, and when she realized he wasn't coming down on her the way everybody else in the community had been, but that he just listened and explained things and showed her love and compassion, he didn't say, oh, it's okay to live with all these men and just go from man to man. No, he said, yeah, I know about what you've done. But I'm offering you forgiveness and a future. That's what God does. Okay? And the other thing that I thought was so interesting is that, okay, at the very start of this, it says he arrived at a Samaritan town called Sikar, near the tract of land that Jacob gave his son Joseph, and Jacob's well was there. Okay, now Jacob... Way, way back in Genesis, Jacob was a guy who had had some major mess-ups early on in his life, okay? He had tried to do everything, everything on his own. Everything. And he made a royal mess of things. But when he finally gave control to God, he'd had his wrestling match with God and finally just let him have control of his life, God used him in a very, very mighty way. Who could have thought? I mean, I... 
I can't imagine that Jacob would have ever conceived that when he dug this well, that hundreds of years in the future, that his own Messiah, including his own great, 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 great grandson, would be sitting there as King of Kings and Lord of Lords and would be sitting at that very well teaching a poor, lost, broken woman how to have living water. What a beautiful picture that is. And I just want to close with Jesus was talking to his disciples later. After all this is done, they were like, okay, they said, we've got food. Come on. It's time for you to eat. And Jesus said, I have food to eat that you don't know anything about. And they were like, of course, they're very literally mind, literal minded too. They said, has anyone brought him food and we don't know anything about it? And he said, my food is to do the will of him who sent me and to completely finish this work. If we want to be like Jesus, if we want to walk like Jesus, if we want to talk like Jesus, let's not be distracted by things that aren't really that important. Jesus was focused on only doing the will of his Father. And that's what we need to be consumed by too. Don't get distracted by all these other things that aren't going to matter in the scope of eternity. Let's just focus on doing the will of God. Loving people and loving Him. That is what will matter in eternity. I hope you have a blessed and beautiful day. Spread the word. Spread God's love to other people. However that is. However that may be. Kind of like spreading dandelion seed. There's a thought for today. Love you guys.